Welcome to the video about this dynasty pack from the Imperial Cycle. The purpose of this video is to give you a close up view of the pack contents so you can make up your mind if this is something you need to purchase as a priority. There isn't any strategy or commentary as we just want to give you the information to make an informed decision. First off, who is Amaterasu? We know from the role playing game, Amaterasu is the Sun Goddess, the force of order that wove all of creation and gave birth to the Kami, the divine spirits that founded all of the great clans. When Lady Sun wept, her tears turned into the mystical stone known as Jade, which has the power to fight evil and darkness. On the front of the pack, and on the card of the same name, we have a depiction of a shrine with a statue to venerate Amaterasu. On the rear, we see this is product number two, and the QR code on the back is currently working. This dynasty pack contains three copies of cards number one to twenty in the Imperial Cycle. And don't forget, you need the core game to play. This story concerns a conversation between the Emperor and his trusted advisor, Bayushi Kachiko from the Scorpion Clan, about the vacant position of Emerald Magistrate. There are no new rules introduced on this sheet. There are two provinces, nine dynasty and nine conflict cards, leading to a very balanced spread. We can see that there are no new neutral dynasty cards, but there are two neutral conflict cards. Breaking it down by clan, we can see everyone gets at least two new cards, with the lion and the crane getting a third card each. And rightly so for the right and left hands of the emperor. But there is no even split between conflict, which is below the line, and dynasty, which is above. Most clans are getting one of each, but the scorpion have no new dynasty card, and the crab and the unicorn have no new conflict card. And look at how the crane and the lion are diametrically opposed. This is incredibly thematic, as these clans have extremely different philosophies and are often in conflict with each other. There are two provinces, one for the void and one for the fire elements. Both of these are shrines, and as we've covered Amaterasu, let's tell you all about her counterpart, Onutengu. He is Lord Moon, and represents the force of chaos. Not much has been confirmed about him in this new version of the setting, but together they created the universe and the original Kami, and thus everyone that came after. Just as the tears of Amaterasu produced jade, the blood of Onutangu turned to obsidian. Obsidian is a pure and holy substance, but in the mortal realm it absorbs negativity. So whenever it is found within the Empire, it is tainted with the essence of Shadowlands. We have three new holdings, and they are clan specific ones from the crab, the lion and the unicorn. And this is the first holding for the unicorn. Because they are still a nomadic people, the unicorn favour portable structures like this yurt. The Karada and Hito districts are both found in the imperial capital of Otusan Uchi. Whilst we haven't had it confirmed yet, there were traditionally 16 districts within the capital, so there is plenty of room for additional cards. And both of these are also limited to one per deck. Every single clan gets one character, which is what you want in a first pack, and only the phoenix and dragon ones are unique. All except the scorpion are dynasty characters too, so you can start bleeding out all of those grey neutrals. Speaking of which, we have a neutral character and our first Shadowlands keyword. The Shadowlands is the corrupted land, blighted by the power of Jigoku, the realm of evil, and the fallen Kami, Fu Leng. It is filled to the brim with terrifying creatures, and also goblins. Three clans have attachments, and it is no surprise the dragon are among them with their jade masterpiece, along with the crane and the phoenix clans. There is also a neutral attachment as well, a finger of jade which is worn to ward off the corrupting taint of the Shadowlands, and it is a literal tear of Amaterasu. Events wise, the two most political factions, the Crane and the Scorpion, get one each. And a Shinobi is a spy or assassin, used for tactics so dishonourable that their use has been banned by the Emperor. Some people use the name Ninja, but every loyal subject knows Ninja don't exist. For a first pack, you want it to have as broad an appeal as possible, and we have seven conflict cards with either one or two influence. All of these, plus the two neutral cards, means they could go in any deck. Cost wise, this is a cheap set, with 3 at 0, 5 at 1, 3 at 2, and a smattering of 3, 4, and 5. And our 5 cost character goes to the Phoenix. The Lion get 3 cards for a total of 2 Fate, don't forget one is a holding. Second cheapest is the Scorpion, which gets 2 cards for 2 Fate, along with the Crab, one of whose cards is also a holding. Phoenix and Dragons are the most expensive, with 2 cards for 5 Fate. We get two Keeper only and two Seeker only cards, and as these were designed long before the current Toshi Rambo season of organised play, both the Lion and the Crane cannot play their own cards at the time of filming. The theme cards for this cycle are the Clan Seals, and first up we have the Crane. The second theme card is the Magistrate, and the first example comes from the Unicorn. 